Arabia. We're rich. We don't need to fight. We let poor people fight for us. Poor people can fight for us. We want it all. That's their attitude. They want to tear down other imperialist rivals. They want to crush any states in the third world who stand in their way, Iran, Libya, Iraq, whomever. They even want to further open up their allies to globalization and global capitalism like Saudi Arabia, globalization at gunpoint. Uh, the uh, collapse of the official stories about weapons of mass destruction and terror, they did have consequences, in fact, ominous consequences. The most significant consequence of the collapse of the story about weapons of mass destruction uh, was that it changed the official doctrine, that if a country has weapons of mass destruction, the United States is entitled to attack it uh, in anticipatory self-defense. What's called in the press and some commentary preemptive war. It's just a euphemism for direct aggression. Uh, as the doctrine's been changed uh, with the uh, discovery that there were no weapons of mass destruction so that now the United States has the right and authority, uh, sovereign right, to attack any country that has the intent uh, and ability develop weapons of mass destruction. Okay, that's a significant change. That lowers the bars on aggression very significantly. In fact, it makes it universal. Uh, every country has the ability to develop weapons of mass destruction. Uh, any country with a high school chemistry and biology lab. Where were the two first wars of this unbounded, never-ending war on terror? They were in first Afghanistan, Central Asia. Second, Iraq, the Middle East. These are the areas which together have 80% of the world's oil and natural gas resources. This isn't a diversion from the economy. This is how the capitalist class aims to strengthen their economy and solve their economic difficulties. This is not a war waged for a few corporations. This is a war waged on behalf of all of U.S. capital, all these multinational corporations. And this isn't Bush the cowboy. This is U.S. imperialism the cowboy trampling on the rest of the planet. What we have is the massive destruction of the infrastructure of a society, a systematic killing of, uh, of innocent civilians, or poor people who have been grabbed by the throat of the poverty, a military uniform put on their uh, back and sent to maim and murder other people around the world, a systematic uh, uh, looting of the national heritage of a country. We have systematically destroyed a nation state and our own civil liberties here in the United States have been systematically compromised. Oil corporation, gas uh, companies, uh, Halliburton, all of these companies, I'm sure they will end up with extremely lucrative uh, contracts coming from this uh, operation. But uh, we like to think that this is a democracy that is serving the interest of 260 million population of this uh, country rather than the specific interests of corporations. What was the first thing we saw during this invasion of Iraq? The first thing that came after the troops was convoys of gasoline trucks to fuel the Humvees and the tanks and the helicopters and so on. So if you have a globe, globe straddling military and this country has troops in 120 countries around the world, you have to have huge amounts of petroleum and energy to fuel that war machine. The second thing is, is the impact on the economy. Global capitalism in significant ways has been built on cheap Middle East oil. Don't believe me, believe Henry Kissinger. The basis of Western pros prosperity, cheap Middle East oil. 
the price and supply of oil has an enormous impact on the profitability and on the competitive positioning of all these capitalist corporations. We're not building democracy in Iraq. We know that for a fact. We know for a fact that there will be no elections. There will be no transfer of power. There will be no transfer of sovereignty. There will be no removal of U.S. military troops. There will be no uh, revoking of the um, illegal imposed economic structural changes that Paul Bremer and the U.S. authority have imposed on the Iraqi population. None of that will happen. So, you know, so what is this job that we are intent on finishing unless we do want, if we, the American public, are willing to sacrifice our men and women and to sacrifice our own humanity by killing thousands of Iraqis to finish the job of controlling other people's resources and empowering the rich in this country and empowering military bases. This is, this is the foundation of the entire global capitalist system and in particular the competitive position of U.S. capital. And that's the final point, the third point, oil is a weapon of empire. If you control the flow of oil, you control those who depend on oil. A 7,000 year old civilization slid into anarchy on live TV. Vandals plundered shops, offices, hotels and hospitals. American and British soldiers stood by and watched. They said they had no orders to act. In effect, they had orders to kill people, but not to protect them. Their priorities were clear. The safety and security of Iraqi people was not their business. The security of whatever little remained of Iraq's infrastructure was not their business. But the security and safety of Iraq's oil fields were. Of course they were. The oil fields were secured almost before the invasion began. This is my third time in the demonstration. Empire is on the move and democracy is its sly new war cry. Democracy home delivered to your doorstep by daisy cutters. Death is a small price for people to pay for the privilege of sampling this new product. Instant mix imperial democracy. Bring to a boil, add oil, then bomb.